Jesus the Christ bless each and every one of you I thank you for tuning in and uh, forgive me it's early morning so if I sound a bit raspy um, like I did in the last video not too much but I could hear it in my own voice um, uh, in the last video on sin overgrowth uh, please forgive me um, yeah I do ask you to go and listen to that video it's a short clip but I think it's something that God used something practical um, showing uh, us the uh, overgrowth there and also gave us a spiritual application as well all right so I thank you for tuning in I thank uh, subscribers new old every one of you God bless you and also if you are trying to contact me I do have contact lock set because I just don't have time you know I'm just gonna be honest I don't have time to respond to a lot of um, PMs I do open it or plan to open it up some but then when I'm not available then I'll just close it up again so just do a test to see if you're gonna send a message just do a short test to see if it's open if it's open by all means you know go ahead and send it and um, as time permits I'll get back with you okay God bless you all and thank you for tuning in alright so let's get to it this one's gonna be a little bit lengthy by now you know exactly how long it is alright but I just titled it just as it is you know I thought of a way trying to think of a way to sugarcoat it there's no way to sugarcoat it okay I please know that I do not mean, mean any offense at all so don't take any okay all right but point blank some of y'all got demons not have demons you got them, okay because some people um, I think have gotten to the point where they have enjoyed uh, their demonic possession and uh, some people welcome it now others may not um, have enjoyed it or even knowingly invited them uh, in that sense I consider that to be oppression there is a difference between being demonically oppressed and demonically possessed but I just want to speak with you briefly about uh, about this whole issue of uh, demons and do they exist you know do we have to deal with that today well we're just gonna go to the scriptures okay all right and in the scripture let's start with mark chapter 1 verse 34 uh, one of the things I want you to know about demons is that they can speak they can communicate with you they can talk to you and they can talk through you they can speak through you so a lot of times you can tell that a person has demons just by the words that they speak mark chapter 1 verses 34 says and he healed many that were sick of divers diseases and cast out many devils and suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him all right so that's one example another example in Luke chapter 4 verse 41 41 it says and devils also came out of many crying out and saying thou art Christ the Son of God and he rebuking them suffered them not to speak for they knew that he was the Christ so we see here that demons have the ability to speak through the person uh, whom they are possessing so a lot of times when you're listening to people their actions their words um, you can hear the demons or the demonic influence speaking through their voice and please know that it's not always something vile it's not always something that you know you say oh yes this person is definitely possessed in fact sometimes you can have someone speaking something um, say for example profanity and that person may not even be possess you know but then you have someone who may be speaking something else and they are possessed okay so you have to listen to what is being said and know what spirit is influencing what is being said all right what is the spirit behind it all right okay now you know me <clears throat> I want to tell you all even when we're doing this do not judge people according to the flesh please don't give me one second if I can stress anything to anyone particularly with dealing with the demonic and dealing with just even your relationships with people don't judge anything according to the flesh you know I hear people all this, the time make comments like oh I can just look at them and tell that they are this or they are that or I can look in their eyes and see no you can't you cannot unless 
what you are seeing is lining up with the Word of God and it's 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 all coming together according to the Word of God you are judging according to the flesh judge nothing according to the flesh that's why the devil is a deceiver because he deceives he's very good at deceiving he's very crafty he's very cunning and if all of your observations and your diagnosis and your uh, assessments are made according to fleshly carnal things then you're always going to fall into his tricks and traps according to the flesh he's going to deceive you according to the flesh because he knows that you use the flesh as your uh, indicator of whether something is good or bad or evil always line whatever you're judging up with the Word of God and with under the subjection to the Spirit of God amen within the boundaries of the word all right so the next thing we want to know about demons is that you can have multiple demons and it doesn't matter what your social status is you can be of high social status you can be a prominent figure you can be poor you can be rich it does not matter all right and so we see an example of this in scripture in Luke chapter 8 verses 1 through 3 it says and it came to pass afterward that he went throughout every city and village preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God and the twelve were with him and certain women which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities Mary called Magdalene out of whom went seven devils and Joanna the wife of Chusa Herod Stewart and Susanna and many others which ministered unto him of their substance so you see here you have Mary Magdalene from whom seven demons came out of her multiple demons that can manifest in different ways at different times amen so it's not she one minute that it could be performing this way another minute it could be another way and you may think okay so the bad acting person is a demon and the nice acting person is not the demon no the nice acting person could be the demon just as well as the bad acting person okay judge nothing according to the flesh amen we walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit of God all right that's how we know that we are the sons and daughters of God okay so we see here a mixture of people of social statuses not only were uh, demons cast out and evil spirits cast out and healings and and such came out uh, came forth as well and I do want to make this um, subject or discussion strictly about um, de demonic activity but you'll see a common um, move here in the scriptures that demons and evil spirits and illnesses and sicknesses and diseases they hang out together because one opens the door to another now not everyone who is sick even among I speak even for myself not that I'm sick but if we have uh, many of us are dealing with you know maybe something that um, some sort of sickness or illness or something some sort of stubborn long-term um, condition that can be demon possession a result of demon possession or it could be of oppression so I'm getting ahead of myself and we'll discuss that later so if you are sick don't get offended please don't get offended okay maybe if the Lord leads I'll do a separate um, teaching on um, illnesses that are a result of oppression or how oppressive spirits bring about illnesses and infirmities okay all right so let's go on again all right so something else about demons remember we're speaking about demon possessions and how you can identify um, demonic activity in a person or in ourselves you know let's not ex exclude ourselves okay all right um, one other thing about demons that we need to know is demons have tables and receive offerings and dedications yeah they they um, love to be worshipped or would they will receive offerings and sacrifices just like you think that you're offering something to God demonic activities receive them in the same way all right and sometimes people think that they're doing God uh, you know they're paying honor to the Lord but it's actually to a demon that's um, influencing their their act all right let's look at first Corinthians chapter 10 verse 20 it says but I say that the kings which the Gentiles sacrifice uh, let me say that again but I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice they sacrifice to devils and not to God and I would not that you should have fellowship with devils all right so what it's saying here that many are fellowshipping with devils and demons and suppose that they are worshiping the true and the living God 
right see whenever you mix Christ with anything else you open yourselves up to communing or fellowshipping with devils these people were taking part of offerings and sacrifices um, that had been de de dedicated to demons even though they may have thought for example in this case that they were honoring uh, people who were heroes or of the faith or their relatives who had gone on but what was actually influencing them to do this and think that they were doing it unto God was a demonic influence all right so we have to be very careful that even in our worship even in the things that we do that we are not being inspired by demons to do them and think that we're doing it to the honor and glory of God all right another thing I want to tell you about um, demonic possession and if you are demon uh, possessed with demons is don't expect everyone to want to see you delivered mm-hmm don't expect everyone to want to see you deliver, especially if your deliverance means they will lose something in the end. <laughs> All right, let's read Matthew chapter 8, verses 28 through 34. Let me give you an example. Matthew chapter 8. Give me a minute to get there. Matthew chapter 8. All right verses 28 through 34 okay it says and when he was come to the other side into the country of the Gadarenes there met him two possessed with devils coming out of the tombs alright these are two men possessed with devils coming out of the tombs exceeding fierce I mean they were they were like terrorists hanging out in the graveyard okay so that no man might pass by that way and behold they cried out saying what have we to do with the Jesus the Son of God now this is the demon speaking through these two boys that they were possessed um, that were possessed with demons they began when they saw Jesus they cried out and said what do we have to do with thee, Jesus thou Son of God are thou come here to torment us before our time it wasn't the boys that were speaking to them it was the demons that had possessed these two young men that was speaking to them and there was a good way off from them and a herd of swine so pigs were feeding out in a field so the devils begged them saying if thou cast us out allow us to go away into the herd of swine and he said unto them go and when they were come out they went into the herd of swine and behold the whole herd of swine ran violently down a steep place into the sea and perished in the waters and they that kept them meaning those who were in charge of the pigs went their ways into the city and told everything and what had befallen or what happened to the two that were possessed with the devil so they went into town and told everyone hey those two boys out there were running around the tombs naked cutting themselves yelling being tormented by the devil they have been delivered and the demons that were in them have entered into our pigs all right and the pigs ran off of the hill and drowned themselves and verse 34 says and behold the whole city came out to meet Jesus and when they saw him they begged him that he would depart out of their coast now here it is Jesus has come and delivered these two boys who had been living in a graveyard but naked cutting themselves with stones running around you know just totally demon possessed and deranged out of their mind and so they got delivered the demons that were in them were cast into the pigs and the pigs ran off of the cliff and killed themselves but because that town was a town of pig herders they didn't care that G these two boys were delivered they were thinking about their financial welfare so I said all of that to say that many people do not want to see you delivered if it means that they will lose something in the end let's just bring this home a lot of people don't want to see their small children delivered by the from the demons that are being tor that are tormenting them because they receive some sort of disability benefits and checks from that child being you know on certain drugs and on certain medications and getting certain treatments and people many people themselves don't want to be delivered I've shared something with you all before about a woman who did not want to be healed because she said if she's healed how's she gonna take care of herself 
because for all of these years she has been disabled and she has no job skills and if she got healed that means she would lose all of her benefits listen many people don't want to see you deliver because your deliverance means they will lose something even if it's not financially they will lose some sort of advantage that they are gaining by you being bound but in the name of Jesus Christ I declare that you will be delivered saved healed and set free from every demonic possession today in Jesus name amen you have to believe it and receive it in Jesus name do not allow people's greed to keep you bound all right so let's move right along I'm gonna skip some of this because you know what I really don't want to go into the healing issue today okay but um, we may have to cross some of those lines all right so another thing to know about demons is that um, they can cause people to fight and they can cause people to make decisions. Um, they influence people into entering into wars, into disputes, not only, you know, national wars, but disputes. They, they, they run in certain territories and they can cause all sorts of conflicts in those territories and they can influence people even to enter into war. Let's look at Revelation chapter 16 verses 13 through 16. It says, And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are spirits of devils or one translation demons working miracles which go forth into the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to battle of the great day of God Almighty behold I come as a thief blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments lest he walk naked and they see his shame and he gathered them together into a place in the Hebrew tongue called arm again so we see here that the false prophet the beast and the dragon them, himself they will all be demon possessed and they will be speaking words that have been inspired by demons and unclean spirits even spirits like frogs right and they will enter into the end time battle and cause other people to enter into the end time battle through words that they will speak and through miracles and those miracles may not always be miracles like we think them uh, from a religious standpoint or from a Christian or a faith standpoint the miracles that we um, when we think of the word miracle it may just be signs it may be great inventions that they uh, um that they create it may just be things that they bring about laws and treaties that they bring about which will serve as a great sign all right so um, yeah demons can speak and they can influence people not only on a national standpoint they can influence you to fight against your neighbor they can influence you to fight against someone here online they can influence you to think certain things about people and enter into silent wars you know there are a lot of silent wars going on Yes, there are silent wars, but as for me, I will let you fight by yourself. Amen. And I hope that you will do the same. Don't give in to the devil. And even more than that, you know, sometimes you reach out, even when you see the demon being, uh, uh, let me leave that one alone right then. Let me leave that alone. That's another discussion. We'll get into that another day. Okay. All right. So another way that demons can manifest themselves is not just in people who are misbehaving but they can manifest themselves even in religious settings even in uh, faith-based settings all right even through teachers of uh, so-called doctrines I won't say the doctrine because we have one doctrine all right but teachings of demonically inspired doctrines and we see that in first Timothy chapter 4 verses 1 through 2 it says now the spirit speaketh expressly that in latter times some shall depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils see they own they have their own doctrine speaking lies and hypocrisy having their conscience seared with a hot iron all right, so as another signs or signs of demonic possession is that the person is a liar. Mm -hmm. That is one of the first signs of demonic possession. Someone who lies all the time. Mm, it's a sign of demonic possession. All right, someone who is a hypocrite. Sure enough, hypocrite. It's a sign. I'm not speaking of inconsistency, but I'm speaking of sure enough hypocrisy a hypocrite that's a sign of demonic possession and someone whose conscience has been seared we see a lot of that into world in this world society seared conscious yeah 
their conscience is seared as if it was seared with a hot iron so those are signs of demonic oppression so now that we know some of the signs there are many others I won't go into um, how do we get rid of them how do we deal with them you know what do you do alright the first thing I would suggest is stop enjoying them many people enjoy their demons mm -hmm. they enjoy them don't do the things that bring them on don't do the things that attract demonic activity sin attracts demonic activity sin is even ex inspired by demonic activity from an outside um, uh, stance but when you begin to indulge in sin and enjoy the pleasures of sin you welcome demonic possession instead of just demonic oppression or influences all right the next thing you need to do is repent in all sincerity repent means not just to confess some words but to forsake to turn away and go in another direction all right another thing that we would do is ask the Lord to take away our desire for whatever satisfaction we are getting from the demonic activity you know whatever that thing is that uh, that you like and enjoy ask the Lord even after you repent doesn't mean that you lose that fleshly desire because see, your flesh has become in two with that activity it doesn't even have to just be sexually it could just be lying some people like the attention they get when they lie when they lie people uh, pay attention to them people listen to them people um, you know just enjoy hearing them they may feel that no one listens to them unless they tell a lie okay so ask the Lord to take away from you the desire for whatever gratification you get from that particular sin that opens the door to demonic possession and activity in your life okay all right so and if you're a type of person that says you're not satisfied with a demonic activity in your life you're rather tormented then you may need to repent from whatever activity you may have done or allowed that has open the door to demonic possession sometimes we can um, open the door through unforgiveness through um, uh, bitterness through hate through jealousy through strife all of these things can open the door to demonic possession all right and know this that possession and oppression are two different things all right another thing to know about demonic activities and demons is that demons cannot be exercised uh -uh. you cannot exercise a demon you will wear yourself out and the demon will still be refreshed <laughs> okay demons cannot be exercised you must be delivered all right they have to be you have to be delivered you are you must be delivered they must be driven out the scripture says that demons must be driven out they will not just leave on their own when it gets to the point where a person is demonically and possessed they have to be driven out they have give that you have given them room or they have dug in deep and they're not just going to leave like that they have to be driven out all right so how do you drive them out I can't give you a formula but I can give you the Word of God amen so let's go to the Word of God and see what the Word says about driving out unclean spirits all right all right so I said I want to skip some things here that pertain to like healing and examples of that but let me just let me just show you some things here one moment okay so when it comes to driving out demons know that that um, Jesus is the one who gives us authority to drive out demons that's the first and foremost thing all right we can't do anything on our own we can do nothing the scripture says without him let's turn to Luke chapter 9 verses 1 through 2 okay Luke chapter 9 verses 1 through 2 it says then he called his disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases and he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick all right so we see from the scripture that Jesus was the one that gave them authority over demons and devils all right and the second thing we see from this passage is that he also gave them power to cure diseases now please know that evil spirits spirits of infirmity um, demons and devils they and sickness and disease you'll find them running together okay it does not mean that everyone who has a disease um, is demon possessed okay that goes for me you or anybody that is has ever been sick or will ever be sick we're not calling on sickness but I'm just I want to clarify that because 
Satan will come and try to torment you with this okay it does not mean that everyone who is sick has an evil spirit or has um, demons in them okay or demon possession but it could mean that they are oppressed by a spirit of infirmity all right like the widow woman who was uh who was oppressed by the devil and jesus loosed her on the sabbath day she had been possessed or oppressed i should say for many years and bound the scripture says she had been bound by satan see a lot of things that are going on is not necessarily possession a lot of it is being bound but there are people who are possessed all right so just wanted to clarify that make sure that um, we understand what I'm saying here all right so I want to show you that from the Luke scripture that Jesus is the one who gives us authority over demons and demonic activity the second thing is that he also gave them power to cure diseases and that diseases and spirits of infirmities and illnesses often travel with demonic demons okay and demon activity and the second thing the third thing is that he sent them to preach this is the most important thing all right if you see a person who is known for working miracles or holding miracle working crusades and they never preach and they have to be preaching a specific message and that message is the kingdom of God be very very careful with that person Mm -hmm. If I don't care if they get up and they begin to preach and they only give you healing scriptures, even be careful with that. When Jesus sent the demons out of the, not the demons, forgive me, the disciples out to cast out demons, he sent them out to preach the kingdom of God and then to cure all who had diseases. If someone is only preaching healing scriptures, that is not the the, the a ministry that God has ordained or they're not operating in the way in which God has ordained them to carry out the healing of people and bringing about deliverance. Jesus always sent them out to preach the kingdom of God. So you may say, well, how do I know if a preacher is preaching the kingdom of God? That's a very good question. I'm glad you asked. The scripture tells us what the kingdom of God is. It says in Romans chapter 14, it says in verse 17, it says, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. All right, not what you eat and what you drink. That's not preaching the kingdom of God. All right, I know some of you have fallen out with me right there. But the kingdom of God is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Amen. That is what the Bible says the kingdom of God is. If they are not preaching righteousness. See, many people want to preach uh, salvation but not preach righteousness. You cannot have salvation. You cannot have the kingdom's gospel without preaching righteousness. I didn't say it. The word said it. If you take offense, hey, take it up with the Holy Spirit. All right. All right. So whenever anyone is preaching or holding a healing crusade, they must preach the kingdom of God. God I don't care if people are sitting there looking bored listen you didn't come in your own strength you didn't come in your own power you are not going in your own might or have you you should always go in the name of Jesus Christ and in the gospel of Jesus Christ and that gospel is the gospel of the kingdom of God and that kingdom of God gospel is righteousness peace and joy in the Holy Ghost amen and peace, not as the world gives it. Amen. Not just to I love you, you love me, we all get along peace. No, that's not the kind of peace that he's speaking about. All right, so moving right along. So we know that Jesus is the one who gives us authority to cast out demons, to drive them away. All right, number two. And we know that, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. We see this in Mark chapter 16, verse 17. So not only has he given us authority, he told us that the believers are the ones who he's given the authority to, and that they would be able to cast them out. Not a hypocritical believer who believes on Jesus whom Paul preaches. We see that in the book of Acts with the sons of Sceva. They didn't even have a relationship with Jesus, and I doubt they even knew Paul. But they said that they went out and tried to cast demons out using the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches. That showed us they didn't even have a relationship with Jesus himself. All right. You have to know him for yourself. Don't go out trying to cast demons out of anyone, not even out of yourself, without using uh, the name of Jesus based on the relationship that you have with him. Your personal fellowship that you have with him, not the personal fellowship that your pastor has with him or someone else that you listen to, listen to has with him. All right. You have to know him for yourself. If not, you may find yourself running out like the sons of Sceva. Sceva, the scripture says that they left that house, seven sons, they left naked and wounded. The demons had stripped them naked and beaten them 
bloody. Don't let that be our case. Amen. All right. So moving right along. So I just wanted to kind of, you know, I'm going to wrap this up because I know this is long. I don't even know how long I've been going on here. But I just wanted to say that a lot of things that we're seeing is the result of demonic possession. People are possessed. I hate to tell you, people are possessed, but I have to tell you, a lot of things that we see in our own lives is the result of demonic activity and um, demonic influences. And the first step for being delivered is to admit, you know, something is wrong with me. Mm -hmm. something is wrong with me something is not right all right and I don't say this to throw off on anyone but I'm here just to preach the word of God amen and you have to know when demons are being in, involved in your lives that's the first step to deliverance and all the other things that I named go back and listen to this also if you're listening on a mobile device please um, when you get a chance look at it online because I often add a lot of annotations when I go back and listen I hear things that I didn't present quite the the way that I wanted to present it I'll go back and add an annotation um, and add some scriptures too but listen we must be delivered amen deliverance is available don't be comfortable with your demons don't uh, think that everyone has your best interest in heart everyone does not have your best interest in heart a lot of people can see you bound and because you being bound benefits them in some way they will allow you to stay bound amen so repent in all sincerity, cry out to God, ask to be delivered, ask to take him to take away the desire for sin. Amen. Be baptized in Jesus name. Get a Bible, begin to read it and do what it tells you to do. God bless you. Have a wonderful day and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ.